The dilemma facing most IT organizations is how to deliver business value quickly while creating the basis for a consistent architecture of information. How can this be achieved? How can business users be insulated from changes as the architecture evolves and grows? In this session, we'll consider the power of abstraction and query federation in providing a roadmap for the architecture. We'll consider when and where this approach can be most effective, and we'll consider its limitations. So here we have the Oracle reference architecture. We have the information sources, the enterprise data warehouse, which is serving up the bulk of the information, and the various groups of users, EPM users in finance, the general BI consumers, and advanced analytics users. The whole architecture is in flux. At any point in time, the measures we require may or may not be in the enterprise data warehouse. The measure may be in the foundation layer, but not in the access and performance layer, and so on. Our first desire will be to deliver a single consistent set of dimensions and measures to users, but deliver something which insulates users from change. For this reason, we have a specialist layer, the abstraction and federation layer. The first purpose of this layer is to present a single set of consistent measures to the end users, regardless of the tool they are using. So its job is to abstract the data source, whether one of the operational systems or the enterprise data warehouse, and present the measure or dimension name with a meaningful business name. This is how we architect the single version of the question. The federation gives us the capability of combining data from various sources. Of course, this capability will be limited. It cannot hope to perform to the same level as joining within the enterprise data warehouse. And there may be data quality issues to resolve. Nevertheless, this technique may give us a capability of delivering very quick value. Let's consider a simple example of where the federation may be useful for the long term. We may have a situation whereby yesterday's sales are in the enterprise data warehouse. The values are being drip fed into the staging layer every hour. But the data for the last hour is in the operational system. We could abstract a single measure of sales to federate across all of these sources so that depending on the time element of the query predicate, we may go to one, two, or all of these sources. This complexity can be completely abstracted away from the end user. This can be very useful for providing an operational view of sales, which can be combined with an historic view. For example, comparing sales right now to the same sale last year. But an even more useful aspect of this layer is road mapping. It could be that at the start of a project, we do not have the measure in the enterprise data warehouse at all. A very simple first step might be to simply map a sales measure to the operational system and allow a limited set of users a capability to report this. A next step may be to take all of this operational view and simply move it into the staging layer. This will lighten the load on the operational system immediately. We can then simply change the metadata mapping from the operational sales to the value now in the staging layer. Lastly, we will move the data through the Enterprise Data Warehouse proper and it will be represented in the Access and Performance layer, for example, in an OLAP structure. Again, we can just change the metadata mapping. The key thing about all of these metadata mapping changes is that the user and their reports are insulated from any change. The user should see no difference. Their report should still work they will just see an improvement in performance and potentially data quality. Of course, this metadata does not need to be manually maintained, as we have already done this work in the metadata of the ETL itself. It's simply a matter of pushing this metadata from the ETL into the abstraction and federation layer. Another advantage of this is that we can start to enhance the metadata with some sort of data quality measure, using some kind of indicator, for example, gold, silver, bronze. At a very blunt level, for example, we might base this quality measure on its source. For example, if the data came directly from one of the operational sources, we may not wish to mark it with any data quality score. When it gets to the staging layer, perhaps we know a bit more about it and can refer to it as bronze quality. When we get to the foundation layer, it may be considered silver. The data quality is good, but the business rule interpretation is not necessarily done. The access and performance layer should be the best quality, and we might augment the measure metadata with a gold indicator for data quality. We can start to get more sophisticated with this. We can start to downgrade the measure if its lineage begins to look poor. For example, if the data quality checks in our ETL process begin to look worse for a particular feed of data. 
This arrangement can be especially useful for project prioritization. Although we can deliver some early business value, the full value of a gold standard measure will not be available until the data has moved to the EDW. As we can see, abstraction and federation give us mechanisms for providing a consistent set of trustworthy measures. We can deliver business value quickly, protect users from change and start to enhance data with some indication of data quality. In the next session, we'll look at information consumed by processes as well as by users.